raw fish, rice, a splash of soy sauce, and a touch of wasabi. Put it all together, and you've got the recipe for a global culinary phenomenon. From the prepackaged section of your local supermarket to the menus of some of the finest Michelin star restaurants, sushi is everywhere in modern society. In the United States alone, we spend over $2 billion annually on the savoury and salty delicacy. And rightly so, it's absolutely delicious. But for some, sushi is so much more than a tasty and trendy meal. For some, sushi exists on an upper echelon on the culinary world, a place where food and art become one and the same, and those who craft it are revered as artists of the highest grade and calibre. Sushi is a fashion statement, a status symbol, a culture all its own. There's so much more to explore and learn within the world of sushi, but here are 8 facts we bet you didn't know about the world's favourite seafood dish. Number 8. The word sushi literally means sour tasting. It may be hard to believe, but the origins of sushi lead back to a dish much more humble and practical than its modern descendant. Over 700 years ago in Southeast Asia, fermented rice was used as a preservative with salted fish that would allow it to be stored for months at a time without rotting. This dish, known as Neira Sushi, is believed to be where modern sushi all started from. Although the rice was traditionally discarded before consumption, the fermentation process would leave the fish with a sharply acidic taste, hence the reasoning behind the sour tasting moniker. Eventually the process of rice fermentation as a preservative fell out with fashion in favour of using an ingredient still key to the modern sushi making process, vinegar. In fact, vinegared sushi rice, or sumishi, is the only ingredient found in all varieties of sushi. Number 7. Would you spend $3 million on a single fish? If you're going to serve fish raw, you better make sure it's good fish. The term sushi grade, or sashimi grade, refers to any fish considered to be of a quality high enough to be served raw without fear of contamination. When it comes to sushi, the fresher the better, and with today's modern demand for sushi grade fish so high, sushi restaurants can wind up paying massive sums of money for the catch of the day. For example, bluefin tuna, one of the most sought after sushi ingredients, has an almost unbelievable value and is regularly sold, not at market price, but at special auctions which take place in wholesale fish markets. In 2019, Kiyoshi Kimura, the owner of one of Japan's most popular sushi chains, spent 333.6 million yen or around $3 million, on a single blue fin. Of course, that level of extravagant spending isn't the norm, but it definitely shows the lengths that some are willing to go just to get their hands on the best the sea has to offer. Number 6. Eating sushi is an art unto itself. With the rise of quick and easy sushi options like prepackaged bento boxes and the incredibly popular conveyor belt restaurants, sushi has never been more convenient or accessible. Still, it is worth pointing out that the traditional method for eating sushi is neither swift or frivolous. Yes, sushi comes from humble origins as a food sold by street vendors, but over time, the cultural perception of sushi has changed to one of elegance and refinery. In kind, the proper method of eating sushi has evolved its own set of strict rules and regulations. For example, it is considered incredibly disrespectful to waste soy sauce. When portioning it out, make sure to only take what you need. It is also considered completely taboo for soy sauce to ever touch rice. So make sure you dip your nigiri fish side down. And make sure you always finish a piece of sushi in a single bite. Sushi is already portioned into single bite sizes and is considered improper to eat it otherwise. Peeled ginger, which is often served alongside sushi, is not intended to be eaten with the sushi itself, but as a palate cleanser between pieces. Wasabi is not intended to be put on by a customer, but rather should be added in advance by the chef. 
As for utensils, this one actually comes down to a matter of taste. Originally, Negra Sushi was intended to be eaten with the hands, but there are a few high-ranking sushi authorities that swear by wooden chopsticks. Lastly, when finishing a meal at a sushi counter, it is proper to offer your chef a drink as a tip. They may not always accept it, but if they do, make sure to have one alongside them as a toast to a delicious meal. Number 5. Do you think you have what it takes to be a sushi chef? The art of making sushi is a very delicate and precise process. If handled incorrectly, the consumption of raw fish, even sushi grade fish, can be deadly. This is why those whom we trust to prepare and serve this dish must be the best of the best. The process of becoming a sushi chef, also known as an itame, is traditionally one of the most difficult, laborious and time intensive forms of chef training there is. In fact, an apprentice working underneath a master itame may have to wait as long as 5 years before they even trusted enough to make rice. Only once the apprentice has successfully recreated the master's sushi rice recipe will they be allowed out of the kitchen and into the front sushi bar and be assistant itame, otherwise known as a waikita. The roles of the waikita are twofold, to assist their master in preparing ingredients, but also to gain experience with the customers. Because a sushi chef traditionally works directly in front of his patrons, a certain level of sociability and ceremony must be present in their handiwork. They perform their craft as if on stage, expertly and elegantly. It is a common saying in Japan that a truly masterful sushi chef can handcraft nigiri so that every grain of rice faces the same direction. Number 4. The best sushi chef in the world? It might just be this man. Because of the staggering level of mastery one must attain as an itame, the title of world's greatest sushi chef is one of the most sought after in the culinary world. And while there is no official bearer, many believe the world's greatest sushi chef to be this man, Jiro Uno. At age 93, Jiro is the most decorated sushi chef in modern Japan. His humble counter-style restaurant, located in a shopping mall in Ginza, has received not one, not two, but three Michelin stars. His menu has only three items, beer, sake, and the chef recommended special course. An array of sushi hand selected by Jiro himself and valued at over 35,000 yen, about $350 a serving. To reserve a seat at his counter, reservations must be made months if not years in advance. He has served some of the world's most elite dignitaries and celebrities, and even hosted a dinner between Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and former US President Barack Obama in 2014. Jiro Ono is the subject of an incredibly popular 2011 documentary, Jiro Dreams of Sushi, directed by David Gelber. If any of these facts in this video have inspired you to learn more about sushi, then this documentary is a great place to start your education. Number 3. Love salmon on your sushi? Be sure to thank Norway. There's a nearly limitless variety of sushi and sushi ingredients available around the world today, but without a doubt, tuna and salmon are the two most common staples of the modern nigiri menu. It's almost impossible to imagine sushi without these two crowd-pleasing favourites. Now, while tuna has been an ingredient in sushi for as long as the dish has been around, the popularity of salmon sushi is actually a relatively recent occurrence, and its origins lie somewhere far, far beyond the tropical islands of Southeast Asia in the frozen north of Scandinavia. While freshwater salmon, as a species, has always existed in Japan, it was primarily used for grilling and never considered a fish high enough in quality to be consumed raw. Over the course of the 1980s, exporters began introducing and serving prime Norwegian salmon to every major hotel and gourmet restaurant in the nation, championing the fish as a sumptuous and decadent delight to be enjoyed in a myriad of ways. Yes, even raw. This campaign, which the Norwegian government had dubbed Project Japan, is still regarded today as a massive success. 
By 1995, Norwegian export of salmon to Japan had increased from only 2 metric ton in 1980 to over 2,800 metric tons, with over 6,000 tons of it relegated precisely for raw consumption. Number 2. A sushi unfit for an emperor? Sure, salmon may be a crowd pleaser, but what if you wanted to get a little bit more adventurous with your sushi? How about some sea urchin? Or maybe a little sea cucumber? Or, if you want to get dangerous, you could try some fugu. Fugu, the Japanese word for puffer fish, is a dish so notorious you likely heard of it before. Puffer fish create incredible potent neurotoxin which is present throughout their entire body. If even a single drop is ingested by a human, it can cause permanent nerve damage, heart failure or even death. Only through precise and masterful preparation by a properly licensed fugu chef can the fish be made edible. Some fans of the delicacy say that the perceived danger involved in the fish's consumption is precisely what makes it so enticing. But not every fugu connoisseur has a death wish. To most, fugu is simply a refined taste to be enjoyed confidently over the watchful eye of a properly trained chef. And this is more or less true. Over the past decade, less than 30 cases of fugu fish poisoning has been reported worldwide, and the grand majority of these incidences can be traced back to an improperly trained or unlicensed chef. Still, no matter the actual risk, there is one citizen of Japan expressed forbiddenly from eating fugu. The emperor himself. No matter the occasion, no matter who prepares it, it is completely forbidden for him to ingest the fish cooked or raw. This restriction has been in place for hundreds of years and is considered by many to be the only limit placed on the emperor's lifestyle. Some modern chefs scoff at this archaic rule, saying that the fish is perfectly safe in the right hands, but perhaps it is wise for an important figurehead to not be taking any unnecessary culinary risks. And number one, the future of sushi is in peril. In its heyday, Japan's seafood industry was 100% self-sustaining, but it swiftly began to destabilize in the 1970s due to a myriad of modern economic, diplomatic and environmental factors, chief among them overfishing. Overfishing is defined as the removal of a species of fish from the body of water at a rate that the species cannot replenish in time, resulting in those species either becoming depleted or very underpopulated in that given area. The massive ecological impact of the relentless overfishing of the Pacific has had some environmental groups and activists up in arms against the sushi industry. Due to its popularity as sashimi and sushi ingredient, the bluefin tuna has been placed on the endangered species list, but the distinction has done little to curb the rampant overfishing of the species. In fact, the demand for sushi grade tuna continues to skyrocket due to its scarcity. This is why some would argue that extravagant over-the-top sales figures for bluefin, much like the one we mentioned earlier, only serve to exacerbate the problem by further inflating an already overblown price.